just want to take a moment to thank my colleagues that I work with every day at Jane Doe, who are behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, amazing teamwork. Hi. <laughs> We did a phenomenal putting this out, and I have to do a special shout out to Tony Troop. Opportunity that I seem to have on a fairly frequent basis, um, and it's so much fun to do it. I uh, I sometimes joke that the lieutenant governor was appointed on the same day that I was appointed as executive director, so we share a bond, January 8th. Um, and we have been so fortunate in this Commonwealth to have such a strong legacy, as I mentioned with Joan, of having some form of a council or commission to address sexual and domestic violence. I, you know, there's a coalition in every state in the country. Not all of them have this body that brings people together from so many different arenas. Um, you know, we have such a long legacy here in Massachusetts, and under various different administrations, including, I want to just call out Sheridan Haynes, who's the director of the former council, uh, Commissioner of Sexual and Domestic Violence. And so we have a long history here. Tammy Mello is also here, current director. <laughs> Days and stage, Jane Doe has been so fortunate to develop partnerships with the administration to really look at the broader systems and policies that impact survivors. When Lieutenant Governor Polito came into office, she made this a priority. She visited programs across the state. She met with survivors. She talked to people who have programs and made it her commitment to learn about this from the ground. And I have deep respect for that effort. And she is available. She attends everything we invite her to and is just an amazing partner. And we are very, just very, very grateful to work with you. Without further ado, I'm pleased to talk. Morning, uh, to come together around a very important cause that's near and dear to all of our hearts uh, in this room. Uh, I just want to thank uh, Deborah. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy we're traveling this journey together, uh, being that January 8th was our, our starting point in that, in that way, but our advocacy and our passion for this issue uh, began long before January 8th of 2015. And I want to thank you for being so positive and optimistic and so energetic around an issue that is so challenging and hard and difficult for people to speak about. And uh, it's, so it's, it's, a, it's fun to be around Deborah in that, in that regard and Tony and the whole team. I just want to thank you so much. It's been a great opportunity to work with you. And today, to, in all of the times that I've been with you, uh, to hear your own personal story, it's the first time I have heard Deborah express that um, in public, and I want to thank you for doing so. We <laughs> have the honor of chairing our council uh, to end and reduce domestic violence and sexual assault in this Commonwealth. And I do that with a number of people uh, across our Commonwealth who convene every other month to discuss ways that we can better uh, protect individuals from harm, uh, to better help our victims and survivors. And as much as we have done so much, the current times also uh, call upon us to do more. Whether it's addiction and the people, many people suffering from opiate addiction, heroin addiction or substance misuse or cultural issues that bring this uh, to people's lives. We are constantly called to evaluate and do more to better prepare our communities to respond and help individuals live a life free of violence. 
That's what this is all about. When you think about your own personal life, whether you've been touched by violence or not, think about how complicated that is to a mother or to an individual of color or an LGBTQ member of our community. How difficult that is to be able to get up, go to work, be a good mother, be a good sister, be a good activist. So the reason we come together to donate our dollars and to bring voice to this issue is because no one in this commonwealth should live a life of violence. <laughs> They've attended every single meeting of our council, our work groups, and always come when we call. And we thank you for that. The White Ribbon Day was an incredible day. They had over 750 people in Faneuil Hall. And many of them were young boys, uh, sports teams, and active in their high schools coming together uh, to talk about this issue. Uh, we were able to get 60 communities to raise the white flag and bring attention and awareness to this issue. I also want to thank you for being uh, so aware that prevention education is really critical to explain and express what's acceptable and what is not at a very early age in a person's life. For many of the people that come to us in need of services, it's about breaking out of the cycle of violence so that they can then lead uh, for the future, for their children to not have to even be touched by violence in their lives. I want to thank uh, for, for you, you for selecting two incredible individuals to be honored today. Matt Fishman, uh, it's no surprise to me that you would come today with your white ribbon and your no mas tie on. <laughs> and it's not something that you just wear today. This is something that you live and, and breathe and support, and you've been doing so for so long. Uh, the fact that years ago you understood that this is a community-based response. And the best part of the video that I saw was the slide about the Commonwealth. I travel this Commonwealth. I'm constantly testing the safety net in every community. Jane Doe is part of that safety net. Partners Health in embedding a response in your hospitals that can help survivors and victims is truly uh, profound and is where it's very much where we need to be. Thank you very much for being such a leader, a male leader in this Commonwealth. Thank you, Vaughn, uh, for coming forward today and expressing uh, your personal story about your mother and your family. Uh, there are so many people that we meet in life and they look all together, and you are, put together, accomplished, professional. You know, one would never know that your life was touched in such a way. But for a survivor to meet you, having known your story, to see what is possible for a woman that has been uh, confronted with such violence that you've seen with your own eyes and you felt uh, in your own heart is really powerful. And I want to thank you for many years ago writing and talking about this issue uh, when it was hard to do so and really taking something out of the shadows and the darkness and places in our commonwealth and bringing light to it and not being afraid to do so. Thank you. justice in action today and it's a call to all of us to be inspired by Matt and Yvonne and what they're doing in their own respective lives and in their workplaces. Each one of us, no matter where you live in this commonwealth, no matter what your experience is, comes to this room with a challenge to accept, to go home, to go about your days, not just today but every day, to help others, our neighbors, our friends, those that we don't know, to live life without violence here in our great Commonwealth of Massachusetts. <laughs> Governor Baker and I, in our Council on Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault, wishes to congratulate you and thank you. This is to